Hey guys, what's up? Stark here. And today I'm going to go over a good way to embrace your your laziness, even though it's not really laziness, but embracing cheating in your in your shots because why not if it's there? All right? So, I'm just going to pull this pre-baked guy out of the oven metaphorically. And what you see here is just you got standard sphere, you got some rings, and then you have some copied polygons, okay? So, just go into each one, so normal sphere. Got all these guys. And keep in mind there's a poly wire there. And then we're gonna go into the high points, which is just copying those over, okay? Now for this, I'm using Redshift. You could use Mantra. They could all do this, I'm assuming. And I'll go over the caveats if there are any, but this is more of a thing that, especially if you're a beginner, and even if you're not, just to keep in mind. So first, let me, Pay the bills by showing this. I just want to show you guys my Gumroad Palm Trees course. It is a nice fun course to do palm trees on, so just wanted to throw this out there. And if you're interested, the link is in the description below. And as you can see, these images going by. If it's compelling enough, consider uh, buying it. So that's all. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, now we're back. So what I'm gonna show is the comparison of the two. Okay, now these are all render time effects that I'm gonna be showing. And if you're not sure what a render time effect is, that's exactly what it is. So I'm gonna go one by one and I'll just shut all of these guys off, the ones that uh, I don't need. Okay, so we're gonna start with the sphere, okay? And I, I, I meant to do it in order of difficulty. None of them are difficult, but matter of speaking. So I just have an HDR lighting this. So you might run into this where you have a sphere, okay? And you want it to be very, very smooth, all right? So what you typically do is you'll turn up the frequency depending, no, no matter what kind it is, polygon, polygon mesh, whatever. Okay, so we'll just go back to polygon, okay? Now, one of the things we could do, and again, this is not groundbreaking, this is the most basic of them is you're just gonna enable tessellation. Now, what's gonna happen is it's going to round this out. And it, it, obviously a sphere is gonna be the perfect example, and I'm just showing it because it is a standard uh, primitive, you know, it's just a sphere. So I have this turned on, okay, and now we're gonna go to the render and let me turn it off. Okay, so there you go. Now you're noticing in this situation that it's it's going to be smaller, and the reason for that is because it's it's tessellating it, and there's not that many polygons. So when it does do the smoothing, it's it is a bit smaller. So if I don't know, I'm down to like bare minimum, but you could even see all the way down the frequency. I can't go any lower than this. If I take anything else, it's it's nothing. It's not a sphere at all. Okay, so this is a good way to save your resources, especially when you have just high counts of things that you need to copy. So I'll probably I'll just go to like three. That's a good one. This should match it almost exactly the same. Okay, so let me go back out and I'll turn it off. So there you go. So there you go. So that's the first one. Okay, and the second one is something that I use. Uh, pff, I want to say constantly, all the time, anytime I could get away with it. In fact, I one of the tutorials I went over and I showed it, but it is, um, and I, I didn't get into the shaders. I had to use a different shader for this, so just bear with me, but I'm gonna go into, okay, my perspective isn't locked. So what I did is I have these rings here, okay? Now the standard way that you probably go about this is, let's just dive in. You'd have a circle, you do a, poly wire. So I just have these poly wires here. Well, the circle, and then I converted it. But what I'm doing is then take it and convert the the outside spline to a polygon, okay? Now the problem is, let's go into here. So we have about 75,000 polygons, okay? Cool, but not really, because why do that when we could do this? Now, for warning, again, I this isn't a shader thing, so I'm just showing what I do. So if you're doing a hero shot, this is certainly not gonna work, but for most things, like 99% of the stuff that I'm doing that whenever I have to use wires or splines or any of that, 
I'll go into here and, oh, let me point this out too. So we have 100 subdivisions in our circle. And in here, I just did 50, okay? Now, I added this width attribute because I'm using uh, Redshift. So what the width attribute does is it allows the hair shader to read the width. And I just kind of matched it to this guy. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to hit render. You'll notice the shaders are, are totally different, okay? It's because one's using, well, they're both using, I put the hair shader on it, but because it's a polygon, it's totally different. But the thing is, is when you're looking at something from like back here, and I mean, if I put some work, I could probably match them a lot better, but I just kind of slapped it on because it's a hair shader. But if you just have things that are like lines, just render them as splines because if we go into here, here's the cool thing. I did 50 divisions, okay? You have to convert it to a curve or basically it has to be a curve, okay? It can't be a polygon for it to work in Redshift. Now, let me point something out that's kind of cool that could uh, help you get there. And I'm gonna fumble through all of these and don't make fun of my Redshift settings. I just basically turn it up. Okay, so here we are in the system. Now you have this hair tessellation mode and I don't know that it's gonna even really show that much because we do have the subdivisions. I The other thing too is I've noticed it has more of an effect on when you have like like bigger curves or this is, it's a complete circle. So the, the curve is not, it's very, they're very like, tight between the primitives are. Oh, and that's the other thing. Let me go back. Make sure when you add this width, it's on the points, not primitives, because it will not do anything. So primitives. And just to prove what I'm saying works. Sorry. See? But again, it's just a really quick way. And let's go over here. If you remember, the other one was 75,000 polygons. And we have, what do you see here? Boom. We have three primitives because each spline is seen as one. This is a good way when you're doing wires. And again, I, I, I cannot even like stress this enough that I love doing this because it's, you, it's just a render time effect and I don't have to worry about anything. I just set the width. And the other cool thing too is, I mean, you could do it the other way is that you could set uh, attributes along the spline. So if you want a different width or color or anything, the hair shader will pick that up. So keep that in mind. Now our last one. Our last one is the most, this is the most obvious one, but still I, I try to use it because as much as I could and I, so let's just render out this guy here, which is already rendered, all right? Now. So the typical way, I just scattered on the surface and then gave it a random point scale, okay? But the thing is, is I am copying. So just like the other one, I'm copying it over and we have 125,000 polygons, all right? Thing is, they're just, they're just spheres, all right? We don't need to do that. What we could do is the exact same thing and then we just set the P scale. Now when we go out here into our Da, 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 particles, render objects as particles. Again, this is, I probably should have started with this one first, but let's render both of them at the same time to see the complete difference. And there is literally none. Okay, so there's no excuse to not use this like every single time, unless there's some very compelling reason where it's up close and something has to do something where it's not a point. Points are awesome, like especially this. Let's just do one at a time, let's just see. Boom, rendered. I mean, none of these render slow, but. You can see the difference. I mean, it's, it's kind of noticeable, not really. So now let's just turn all these guys back on. Under it, let me fit it. And there you go. So except for this, this shader here, <laughs> everything else is essentially the exact same, okay? And that's what I'm saying, like embrace cheats because they help and it's quicker and it's less overhead for your renders. Because again, these are super simple, you know, examples. But I think that doing this and keeping this in mind when you are doing things will save you tons of headaches, especially with iterations. And especially um, 
with the particles, like like uh, attributes, colors, all of that attached to it, it's awesome where you don't have to worry about managing the, the polygon count. So that's all guys. Uh, if you're a beginner, get some use out of this, incorporate it. If you're not a beginner, I'm sure that I'm just, you're watching this for fun because you wanted to hear my voice. So that's all later guys.